it's it's really a miracle. Like we did not expect him to. Uh -huh. so we that's are amazing. Very thankful. Yeah, that's awesome. I love seeing that post. That was fantastic. Thank you. So keep keep those posts going. You know, when we have something that's a silver lining or we have something to share, keep those going. Keep them on our page as well as pop them out to everybody else. Because um, it, it really is. This is the mindset. This is mindset. It, it's 1000%. We keep talking about it. Um, so, well, well, great. Well, let's keep on moving here because we have an action-packed uh, meeting today. I'm really excited about it. Um, we have two special guests coming on. Um, and once we uh, crank through the first part of the meeting, um, then I'll pass the torch to Henry Russell, um, who is one of our um, local rock stars at Smedra. And the guy is just on fire and he's got tons of energy. Um, and then we're gonna follow that up with Denny Grimes. Denny's coming back on and he's really excited to chat with everyone. Um, for those who were with us, Denny was our bold coach a couple years ago, uh, and he rocked it. And it was something where um, we had a lot of fun. And he's – I'm not going to steal the thunder. I'll let him kind of go over everything, go Bulls. Exactly. Go Bulls. <laughs> go Bulls. Um, and so, uh, so, yeah, it'll be awesome to see Denny here at 1130. So upcoming listings, let's dive into that. So who has an upcoming listing we can talk about? And if you're off, there you are. Um, Do you have another upcoming one? Or I'm... There you are, Mine went under contract. Aw. <laughs> 12 offers. Aw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jim Brown, I see you, buddy. Are, we have yep, I've got... I'm going down to see one in Alamosa of all places um, on Wednesday because I got plenty of time to drive. So, <laughs> um, but it's uh, it's it's gonna probably gonna be an investor um, piece. I'll I'll know next week, but uh, but I just talked to him this morning. He is ready to sell. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So we got one upcoming in Alamosa. Fantastic. Who has another upcoming mis listing? Thank you, Jim. Yep. Upcoming listings, dun, dun, dun. William shared one in the chat box and all it says is this one needs to go under contract. <laughs> ah. Awesome, William. <laughs> oh, helpful, with William, helpful. With a link, whoa, Mr. Hey. All right, so um, let's keep on moving then. So we have uh, any price reductions, price improvements, motivated sellers. What do we got? Hey, we have one. Awesome. Um, it's 9203 West Cedar Avenue, and it went from a million even to 975, and the sellers are extremely motivated. They need to move to Europe quickly. This is the one that is 4902 square feet, all above grade. There is no basement. It's six bedrooms, three baths, and a six-car garage. The six-car garage also has two lifts in it. So it is an amazing property, very updated, um, across from Colorado Christian University in Lakewood, 9203 West Cedar at 975. It's a, it's a deal for any of your car people, and we'd love to do a seller-hosted um virtual tour and they are prepared to do that so thank you awesome thank you renee um other any price price improvements price improvements all right how about buyer needs buyer needs So quiet. I know. Well, let's let's go ahead and keep on moving then. And um, you know, I want to kind of take a change of direction here. Uh, you know, my first thought was is, is to say, what are we seeing out there? Um, and you know, really, when we're looking at uh, motivation, thanks, Deb. I know you're getting ready to go with something on that one, weren't you? Uh, and when we're looking at this, let's let's focus on some success stories, right? 
So Rhonda Richardson, you had 12 offers, right? On a brand new listing, you staged it, it went incredible. Could you tell us a little bit about that, a little bit about your strategy around that? Yeah, I, I, yes, I, I sent out 300 postcards to the surrounding neighbors and I uh, put a link to my uh, business Facebook page to invite them to a virtual tour, um, a live virtual tour that I was going to do between 10 and noon um, on the day of uh, the first day of showings. Um, I, I did a Facebook ad through command with the help of Seamus. Thank you, Seamus. Um, if you haven't done that, if I can do it, you can do it. With, well, maybe Seamus might have to help you too. Um, uh, really promoted it with, because um, I knew it was coming up. I'm in a networking group. Um, again, just pretty much everything you guys tell us to do, I did it. Um, uh, unfortunately, before um, the day that it was, I was supposed to do the, the live uh, open house was when my dad became ill. So I, I ended up just doing a video and posting that in place of the live tour. But um, I was there uh, to put out my flyers and sign and all of that. And there were cars lined up on the street. And my stager, we were masked. And she just kind of walked by because people were just like there. And um, she had the flyers. Um, and she was just handing them through the cars. And she was just asking, are you waiting for your realtor? Or, you know, they're like, no, we just saw it online and just wanted to drive by and see this house. So it did get a lot of exposure. And, um, and then even when we were getting in our car a half hour later, people were driving by and I would kind of wave at them. I was like, hey, what's going on? Like, we saw this house online. So um, I, I want to do some uh, follow-up with those same 300, uh, maybe to give them the statistics, 30 showings, 12 offers, blew it out of the park on uh, $21,000 over asking price. Um, with a 5,000 uh, appraisal gap. So, um, yeah, I, mean, I, I was blown away. I just didn't know if people would even come on the coronavirus weekend to look at it. And I will say we priced it aggressively. I could have probably gone minimum five, pushing it at 10. But the strategy that I said with the sellers is if we can get these buyers in that this is the peak of their price point, they're going to be the ones to get their offers in. And unfortunately, we're going to use those to bump up the others that come in. And it happened exactly that way. The offer started a little over, a little over, and then it jumped 10,000. The median was in the 10,000 over. It jumped again to another. So um, my clients had met with another agent that wanted to price it um, about 12,000 higher than me. And uh, I didn't know that till later. But when I explained the strategy of this pricing, um, they were blown away with the results because it was there. I said, you're gonna, we're gonna bring these buyers in that really aren't your buyers, but they're gonna be the ones to bring your buyers. So Rhonda, quick question. You know, with everything going on right now, and, and of course, you know, there's all kinds of different uh, opportunities and fascinations happening, right? What would you say to everyone? I mean, for those who are having these conversations, they're reaching out, they're, they're starting to say, hey, should we list the home or not? Um, you know, what's going on in the market right now? What, what would you say? You have the experience. So I, I want to highlight you on this one. An awesome, awesome job, by the way. Thank you. I had great clients. They did every single thing I asked them to do. We actually put it on the market a week early. So all of the staging, all of the ads, um, my usual ad company couldn't get it done in time. So I had to go to FedEx and every single thing I tried fell through. But I mean, I just pushed ahead and found another way to get it done. But the statistics that Amber is sending to us every day, the first day she sent it, I did a, uh, my own uh, live. I just held it up, which made it reverse. But I gave the numbers. I said, you know, this, just to assure you, business is carrying on. And I'm not going to do it every day because I don't want to flood people with it, but I am going to do it periodically. And then the, on the day that I don't do it, I'll probably compare, okay, this is kind of what we're seeing and, and give it, you know, it's early in the week. I'm not expecting new listings. Let's wait till the end of the week and that sort of thing. But um, I have two investors under contract right now. And, you know, this would be a good time for them to just walk away. Hey, you know, we don't, we, we just don't know. But um, as I started out as an investor and I, I bought at the low of the market and the height of the market, and I said, you know, if you want to get in the game as an investor, you just got to do it. And when the market goes down, this, this happened to me. 
Um, I bought a house at the peak, the market tanked, but I already had a, a tenant that was paying over what my mortgage was. But then it went up and up and up and up and up. It's a great, you know, it's great now. But I said, when people lose their houses and that could happen in our future, they may have good jobs, but they're going to need a place to live and rent until they get on their feet. So we right. actually, I took them to rentals.com, rents.com. We looked at what was on available, what we thought they could get, what their net would be. And they're, they're in it. They're in it. I, I think they're both not going to do anything on the loan objection and, and they're going to take it to closing. Excellent. Excellent. Well, fantastic job. I love the success story with that. I really do. And, you know, for those of us on the call listening, please take notes around this because, you know, Rhonda, you easily could have said, we're going to wait, mm -hmm. right? Or this isn't the right timing or this and that. And instead you found a way and look at what you were able to do for your clients. That's absolutely amazing. So kudos to you. I think that's awesome. Um, gosh, talk about raving fans. Um, Deb, before I, I turn uh, the uh, pass the torch here over to uh, Henry, uh, do you have anything for broker bites that we should chat about here very quickly? Yeah, really awesome things. So, um, first of all, I don't know if you all have noticed. You're, everybody's getting tons of emails, but there's one from Smedra. They talk about finding a way, right? So they have always offered free CE classes. And so now they have, for members only, um, free CE classes online. So you can jump in online and get the CE credits that you need. Uh, second thing, Central Lock also put an email out, Smedra put that out, and they've extended the payment date to August 1st. I wish I'd have known, I'd already paid. So it was due for March 1st, but because of everything's going on, they have extended it to August 1st. So if you haven't paid your central lock thing, that's one thing you can put off until the end of July. Um, and then the third thing is our March Madness contest. So March ended yesterday. It was only 100 days long. And um, <laughs> so not 120 at least. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to extend our March Madness contest and um, into April. Don't be a fool. Get your business in. And um, <laughs> And uh, we'll still have the same price, you know, nice big steak dinner for the, the team that, that wins and takes it all. So Zach is ahead, and let me tell you why. He is doing the, the 30 calls a day, and he sends me his call logs. Every single day I get them from Zach, and that's what's putting him ahead. So I'm not getting anybody else's. Ooh, that, you know, I, I kind of hear that as a challenge. Just a little. That's, I don't know. That's how I'm taking it. Don't be a fool. Send in your, I feel like Mr. D, I need some jewelry. Um, <laughs> send in your, send your things in so, so we can start counting all that up. And if you've got logs from March, send them in. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Nothing, no, no pressure, no diamonds. William, Scott, and Jim, game on, guys. Zach's going to take it and run. <laughs> all by himself uh, all by <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right well hey you know what i wanted to do is introduce a good friend of mine um i'm really really excited to have him on the, on the call uh and um henry you know we we chatted what was this about a couple months ago if not three months ago um we've been we've been talking for a few months now and right you know one of the the coolest things i thought immediately um was the alignment and alignment with our culture, with our core values, all those pieces. And um, and you have an incredible presence at Smedra, um, which thank you for that, by the way, and the time you invest in there. And you know, you're you're with Movement Mortgage. And I know there's a lot going on right now. Um, yeah. You know, and we're gonna we're gonna chat with a national bold coach, Danny Grimes, here in a little bit, um, and and talk about what that market looks like. What are you seeing on the local market? Where you know, what, what can you give us information wise that we can work with, you know, use with both buyers and sellers? Right. So uh, just to be sure, can everyone hear me? Okay. Yes. Cool. Okay. So uh, I put together a little makeshift uh, 
soundstage today to try to get this done. I'm doing about three Zoom calls a day now, so I figured I should invest in a little bit of a uh, backdrop. So, anywho, uh, you know, the Colorado market is uh, it's ebb and flow. We're really lucky that here in Colorado, obviously, we have been determined to be essential uh, to uh, business, so that's awesome for us. There's obviously been a lot of changes, but first, let me start by saying thank you so much for allowing me to spend a little bit of time with you all. Obviously, we're all very busy with other things going on, and I really appreciate it. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Debbie, for allowing me a few minutes to speak with your uh, most trusted, uh, you know, uh, agents here. So, uh, Again, my first name's Henry, last name is Russell. I'm with Movement Mortgage. I've been in the industry now for 21 years. So I'm telling you that because I was here during 2008 when it all went wrong. And let me tell you, uh, they have definitely put in some, what I would call red flags so that we don't go through that same thing again. So the things that I'm gonna talk to you about today are those red flags so that we don't go like we did in 2008. Yes. So first and foremost, let me start off with a little bit of good news. Our economic forecast for rates between now and the next 90 days is still going to be 30-year fixed, three and a half. That is what we are thinking we're going to be at. Why is that important to you? Because someone at three and a half versus 4%, uh, they just have more buying power, mm -hmm. right? If I qualify somebody at $300,000 at 4%, they probably qualify for about three fifty at three and a half. So that's why interest rates should be important to you as a realtor uh, to ensure that your borrower has more buying power. First thing I'll talk about a little bit is our FICO updates for loans. Everyone is familiar with the FICO score, I'm sure. You guys all know what that is. Uh, we have made changes. And when I say we, I mean lenders across the board. I mean Fannie, I mean Freddie, I mean uh, VA, USDA all the way across the board. So uh, just a couple things if you wanna maybe take some notes on these things. And again, I don't know how in depth you get with your clients on what their FICO scores and things of that are. However, uh, if you do have a client that you know is someone that you qualified that just barely got qualified, uh, that's someone you might wanna have your lender take another look at to make sure that they are still qualified. All the things that I'm gonna talk to you about today have already gone into effect. They went into effect March 27th. Uh, so anything that I tell you today is already in effect. If they have not been locked or if they have not closed yet, these rules will probably apply. So minimum credit score now for investment properties, I know we're talking about investment properties, is 720. If you don't have a 720, you're probably not gonna get a loan. Minimum uh, FICO score for HomeStyle or any of the programs that we use for first down payment uh, is 720 also. Uh, Homestyle programs. Now, everything that I say today is not going to pertain to every single lender. Every lender will have their own uh, appetite for risk. So some lenders are still going to close loans that are under these guidelines that I'm telling you about. However, most of us are going to be at these guidelines because we're not going to have a place to actually sell the loan once we conclude it. Um, anyone doing manufactured homes? All right, let's move on. <laughs> so a uh, couple of things about government. So before, remember with FHA and USDA and VA, you could go down to a 580 most of the time for any of those uh, deals. Right now, uh, they are all at 640. So if you have somebody that you qualified that was under a 640, and again, you'll have to talk to your lender if you're not that in depth with their stuff, uh, they no longer qualify. And that's a 640 if they're under 45% on their DTI. If they go over 45%, that FICO requirement is a 680 now. So again, they have tightened the guidelines to ensure that the risk that they're taking is less and less and less. Now, personally here at Movement Mortgage, we've made the decision that we're not even doing CHAFA anymore for the next 60 days. You will see that across the board, lenders will start to pull back from chat. The appetite for bond loans right now and the appetite for first, uh, first time home buyer loans right now, it's just not there because it's just more risk associated with those loans. And right now, uh, investors want warm and fuzzy. And even though the government's buying, uh, you know, all these MBSs, mortgage securities, 
they're just pouring money and pouring money and pouring money, it still does not have investors feeling overly great about that. So just know if you have any government loans or any investment loans, uh, have your person rerun that individual because they may or may not qualify at this point. So I'll talk a little bit about uh, forbearance really quickly here. I know there's a lot of different things out there about forbearance and programs and things of that nature, um, how it's not gonna impact their score. If you have clients that are going into a forbearance program, just so you know, uh, they probably aren't gonna qualify for a loan. They're not gonna qualify for a loan because if they're requesting forbearance, they either have cut pay or they got laid off or they're just not making the income that they used to make. So if someone tells you that they're going into a forbearance, please be sure to understand they probably are not gonna qualify for a loan. That's important for you. Obviously, you don't want to spend time with individuals that right now are just not gonna qualify. Obviously, you put them in your pipeline, you're making 30 calls every week and uh, you'll catch those people uh, on the other side. Uh, a couple of things about verbal VOEs. Uh, does everybody know what a VOE is? Yep. <laughs> Starts with a verification, huh? Verification of something, right? <laughs> so VOEs, verification of employment. So uh, a VVOE is a verbal verification of employment. Here's what I'm telling you about this. So there's two new rules that they have put in place. Number one, we would do a verbal verification of employment five days before they close. So if you have a borrower that gets laid off three days before they close or they lose hours three days before they close, we will find out. We also, as lenders now, have to do a two-day verification of employment, and that is with the client. So we are going to call your client, and we're going to say to them, are you still actively employed? Are you still working the same amount of hours you were before? We are going to do that. We, as loan officers, now have to certify that they're still employed. Our processors have to certify with the company that they're still employed. So uh, those are things that you need to know. So if, you, if your client ever says anything to you in the sense of, I'm working from home now, they've cut my hours, they've done this, they've done that, that's probably going to be a red flag for you to uh, inform your lender, hey, I just had a conversation. Uh, I don't know if this is going to impact the loan or not, but it would behoove you to find out as soon as possible because obviously we don't want to go past the loan termination date where that individual is going to lose their earnest money. So that's why it's important that you uh, have that great relationship with your lender where you're having those calls on a weekly basis about your clients. The last thing that I'll talk about is uh, some of the things that I know you guys have heard about uh, are appraisals. So right now, the appraisal companies are telling us, or AMCs, they're telling us that appraisals are taking anywhere between three and five weeks. Well, this is important to you because when you're writing your contracts, if you're trying to get an appraisal within two weeks, it's gonna be really hard to do that. And I'm not saying that's gonna be impossible, but most of our AMCs right now, they won't even accept a rush. They won't even accept a rush. They won't even take more money to get the, the appraisal done quicker. So I definitely recommend um, making sure that you at least give three weeks from the date of that contract to the appraisal deadline. Uh, that'll help everyone in the transaction. And now you're setting realistic expectations with your client, with the seller's realtor, and obviously uh, with the contract. A Couple of appraisal updates uh, that are actually good news. Uh, so for FHA loans now, they are allowing desktop appraisal or exterior only appraisal. What does that mean to you? That means that those appraisals can be done pretty quickly because they're not going to the property or they're not going inside. They're either doing a drive-by for an exterior only or they're gonna do what's called an AVM, which is an automated value meter, which basically means they're just gonna check comps online. If it's in line with those comps, they're gonna do the desktop appraisal right there on the spot. Uh, last but not least, e-signing documents. I know there's been a lot of talk about that. There was a new thing that just came out that we'll be able to e-sign all of our documents. All lenders are not accepting e-sign documents. Fannie and Freddie are still, has not really given us um, authorization on if that's gonna be 100% across the board. Different counties have different rules and regulations on that. 
So um, if you are in a situation where someone's going to have to e-sign the entire package, uh, definitely know that there may be some hurdles that are involved with that. Last but not least, Movement Mortgage. Uh, we do a uh, what's called an easy sign. And the, the individual, the borrowers, they will sign 75% of their documents on their phone. They'll receive an email link in the morning at, set, or at 12 a.m. the day of signing. When they wake up, it'll already be in their email. They can hit sign, 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 sign. It signs all their documents, 75% of them. When they do meet with the notary or they do go to the title company, they only have to sign 25% of the documents. And that 25% of those documents are taking anywhere between 10 and 15 minutes. It's a really cool thing that we offer because obviously no one wants to be in a room with someone that they don't know uh, for an extended amount of time just during this time. So uh, it is something that we offer. If you have questions about it, I'm more than happy to talk to you about it. So that's uh, all my time right now. If anyone has any questions for me, I'm more than happy uh, to answer those. Uh, I'll also stick around for the entire meeting uh, in case anything comes up that maybe I can chime in on for you. Awesome. Hey, Henry, could you uh, let everyone know um, what your uh, email address is and cell phone number? Um, yeah, just sure thing. not able to reach you through the office. Sure thing. So my cell phone number, uh, actually, I have two cell phone numbers. I, I am also working in Arizona. So if anybody works in Arizona, I can help you out there. Uh, so I kept my Arizona number and I have a new Colorado number. So both phone or both numbers come directly to my cell phone. So it doesn't matter which one you call. Uh, but my best number 303 550-0034. And then my uh, other number or my email address is my full name. So it's just Henry dot Russell and Russell is two S's, two L's at movement.com. So Henry dot Russell at movement.com. Uh, those would be the two easiest ways for you to get in touch with me. Uh, text messaging is always the quickest with me. I can always at least uh, get back to text messages while I'm in the middle of doing other things. Awesome. 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 Thank you, my friend. I really appreciate it. We all greatly appreciate it. So, um, and as, as he said, he's, uh, Henry's going to be on the call here for the rest of the period. Um, and if you have questions around that or want him to do a deep dive with you, please reach out to him. Um, so, uh, Henry, again, thank you very, very much. Um, okay, no so I am extremely excited to introduce our next guest, uh, my good friend and our bold coach, Denny Grimes. Denny has experience. Um, I love seeing your face, Denny. It's been too long. And uh, it, Denny has experience from being all the way from being a mega agent, uh, being a national bold coach, traveling all around the country. Um, being a partner on one of the largest expansion teams as locations all literally across the country, as well as which I think is awesome, Denny, is the fact that you just came back from a big trip with John Maxwell. Could you start with telling us a little bit about that? And then we'll dive into kind of what you're seeing in the market. Hey, yeah. Good morning. Can you hear me okay, Patrick? Yep, I can hear you. Awesome. Yeah, well, it was awesome to be in Israel with John Maxwell. You know, uh, we have been kind of going to his exchange program and his uh, annual events uh, for a number of years. He's a great leadership author and mentor uh, and coach to my wife. And uh, we were um, had a great trip in Israel, and he gets us into places where no one could go. And we were able to be one of the last flights out of Israel uh, before they started closing it down. So it was a little bit uh, exciting. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, I, I remember we were all, uh, uh, well, we were Facebook messaging back and forth when that was going on. Well, what would you say, I mean, such an amazing trip, and, and holy cow, talk about mindset and motivation and just, just truly um, being grounded. What, what would you say were some of your, like your top three ahas that you had coming from that trip? Well, of course, you know, I, being kind of growing up in, in this Bible belt and being raised by my grandparents, you know, of course, the, the, the Christian and the, and the faith is kind of big in our family. So going and doing a lot of the things that basically you've read about since uh, vacation Bible school and actually walking in places with such historical and uh, religious meaning, that was awesome, of course. Um, probably the other takeaway is we had great tour guides. And, you know, when you look at Israel, Israel is like about the size of uh, Metro Denver. Right. I mean, no, it's like small and and how those people know their history and, and know. I mean, they've got 
and they've got their enemies within a nine iron of them and how they and how they have to live and how we take our life for granted. I felt kind of ignorant and, and ashamed that I didn't, I don't know history or geography like I should. And it's a great people, uh, both Christians and Muslims there and many areas getting along fine. I know the media really kind of makes it out to be like no one gets along. Uh, it was, it was just odd. It was a, it was a bucket thing, Patrick bucket. I love it. That, that is so incredible. Um, well, and, and, and now you, you know, you're back. And, uh, and you're back safely, so we're very happy that you and Kristen and Christy and um, her husband and everyone came back and, and is, you know, kind of hitting the ground running. Um, gosh, we're in, a, we're in a market shift, Denny. And this is not foreign ground for you or for Kristen or for, you know, just being able to concentrate on opportunities here. What, what are you seeing and what are you seeing in front of us? Well, how, how, how's the, I, I, I've got my slideshow up, so I want to go through a couple things and answer your questions. Can you guys see the, the slideshow behind me? Is it coming up okay? Mm-hmm. Yep, I can see it. Awesome. Well, one of the big benefits of being in real estate for almost 100 years is you've been through a lot of different cycles, right? You know, the economic ups and downs. We've been through 9-11. We've been through a couple of hurricanes. I mean, even you guys had to live through the 2014 debacle when uh, the Broncos played the Seahawks, right? So there's been a lot of disruptions in the marketplace. And the interesting thing is, and you see my little graphic here, every disruption has one thing in common, Patrick, and that is it is, it is preceded by uncertainty. And then uncertainty, fear then, fear then moves into, uh, into place when there's uncertainty. And one thing it's worth writing down, I heard somebody say this, I wish I'd append it, Fear is a terrible advisor. And would you not agree that people, there's a lot of uncertainty right now. And I have to give, I've never met Henry. Henry, uh, I would, we do a lot with movement as well. I know Casey and a lot of the guys, Scott Green and those guys. And uh, you're lucky to have a guy with that kind of expertise. I was really fascinated to listen to you. So good job. You know, you've been doing it 20 years. So you've, you've kind of earned your stripes. Um, so there's a lot more fear in the marketplace. And, and, and one thing that, that we teach in bold that is true in every area of your life is that mindset is everything. Now, here's the thing is that when, when the market and when the majority of people go into fear, we, we need to be coming from confidence. And so what I'd like to do in, in the you know, little bit of time I have here is share a couple little things about, about what I've learned and some scripts that your folks can use um, to the objectives you're getting from buyers and sellers. Is that fine? Are we good? Absolutely. We'd love that. Thank you. I, I know that uh, James Shaw uh, is teaching Gary Schiff book uh, every morning on some sort of a Zoom call at eight o'clock Eastern time. I don't know what is, what's going on out there. And of course, he's the expert in Schiff. And I want to just share one thing with you because um, Gary Keller, when he wrote the Schiff book, was talking about the shift back then. And he's been predicting a market shift for a number of years. In fact, he said in 2000, early 2019, he said, whatever you did, whatever money you made in 18, if you wanna make more in 19, you better do something different. Well, he was just off one year. Now, I know that this is gonna be a disruption. It's not like the 2006 market crash. And so it's not gonna be a four or a 15 year recovery. However, we don't know how long it's gonna it's going to take. And that unknown can work to our advantage if we have the right mindset. Listen to what Gary has to say. I'm just gonna read a couple sentences to you. When people have good reasons to buy, they do just that, right? And he's talking about buyers. However, we're talking about buyers and sellers. When the market changes, it throws people off balance. Now. That's true, people are off balance right now. I mean, when they go in by 15 years worth of toilet paper, the first time they go to the store, that's not rational, that's right. off balance, right? All of a sudden, they're not sure of themselves and they hesitate to move forward. So we're seeing some of our buyers starting to like say, maybe cancel or sellers saying, hey look, I don't know if I'm gonna list right now. And this is what Gary says that I wanna share with you. They need someone to intervene and help them overcome their reluctance. They need someone to show them that it's over Okay. And it's okay. We need to give them permission. It is okay to buy or sell now. In the end, you'll be the highest level fiduciary when you don't let should be buyers or should be sellers cave into their sense of fear that it's better to wait. They need to understand, buyers and sellers need to understand that their thinking may be faulty. And I'm going to give you some ammunition to basically help, you, help them with that. 
And so everyone basically at some point in time, when you raise children, there comes that awesome or awful day, depending on how you look at it, where you have to take them to the first day of kindergarten. And you know what? You, your kids will be on one end of the spectrum. They're, they're going to stand there and they'll look into the teacher and the kids and the toys and they'll say, and they'll run in there and have a great time and, and, and won't have a problem at all. And then every now and then you're going to have someone who has a clinger, has a clinger. They're hanging on to your leg. Has anyone had a clinger before? <clears throat> so when you have the clinger, what do you say to them? I mean, the parent says, what? It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Now, we are in exactly the same situation. That little toddler has uncertainty. It's different than what they're used to. They need someone to say it's okay. Now, that should be us. However, that's why we, we gotta have the mindset it's gonna be okay too. We can't be coming from fear. That doesn't mean we can't be cautious, okay? So in a bold law, we talk about coming from contribution. So I'm gonna give you a, a formula to follow where you can come from contribution. And before I do that, let's, can I just have, a, most, maybe most people are muted, Patrick, except for you, right? So if, if I right. could just talk to you, that would be awesome. Um, we didn't rehearse this. Denny? Generally speaking, when an agent finds out their buyer that basically was under contract and wants to cancel, or their seller that was basically already listed wants to take it off the market for a few minutes or a few, a few months, what do you think is the very, 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 very first thought they have when they get that message? I mean, there's no right or wrong answer. What do you think is the very first one, they, the first thought they have? I think there, there's a, well, there's the concern that they had to put everything on hold. Um, you know, if, they're, if they have a big wire around selling or a big wire around buying, now everything has been paused, which that, that stagnant then creates that fear. Yes, exactly. And when you take that back one more little generation, probably in this human nature, our first thought is, oh crap, what's that going to do to my cash flow? Right. Because I'm not, I had, not only had I been counting on that commission on that house I just listed that hadn't gone pending yet, I've already spent it four times. So it's, and it's only natural to do that. However, I'm just going to ask you guys, do your best to se separate yourself because when we have that thought and we approach our client with that mindset, is it, a, are we coming from contribution or are we coming from fear or are going to hurt? It's going to hurt us. So mm -hmm. you can have that. And this goes back to a thing that, you know, education and Keller Williams, you know, you've been teaching your PC program has been teaching, have a pipeline because the people that have been in this along the longest have the least amount of fear because we've been there, done that, have the t-shirt to prove it. Or we have and or we have a pipeline so one sale doesn't put us you know in the weeds one more thing that I've learned kind of interesting here in the last week or so is I've been able to share with some market centers and thank you so much for letting me come in with you guys is that we always say this logic makes them think emotion makes them act and in my mind I and it's the bold law and in my mind I've always associated that with that emotion gets them to buy emotion gets them to buy you know what that law cuts both ways Emotion gets them into perilous, into par being paralyzed. Emotion gets them to cancel. So many times when buyers and sellers are coming to you right now with some concerns and some objections, they're coming out of emotion. And one thing I want us to kind of understand is, you know, sometimes we get too logical. We want to explain why a house is going to sell X number of dollars a square foot. We forget about their why, like you talked about a minute ago, where the why is their emotion. When they're coming from us from a, a position of fear we need to give them a little bit of logic to balance that teeter-totter does that make sense mm -hmm. so i've put down a couple of different things here in a metaphor that we'll just talk about and we'll go any direction you want at some point in time i'd love to be able to have more time with your folks because this is the magic formula and i know that we've heard this before some of this has been in bold before however we kind of skim over it i think it's so important that when someone comes to you with a concern this is the formula take a screenshot of it um I trust you probably maybe you're recording this um mm -hmm. maybe i want to think i want to record it too so what i want to do is acknowledge it and if we don't acknowledge it and make them feel comfortable they're not going to open up so basically when someone gives you an objection and i know you kind of have to bite your lip that bleeds a little bit acknowledge where they're coming from because that opens the door of a conversation then we want to isolate it 
address it and then close. Now, I don't know if you can see on the screen here, I've got asterisks and here's, here's the magic. We're gonna be doing it by asking questions. Write this down if you will. When you tell, you push. When you ask, you coax. So, so when we wanna ask questions to lead them, Patrick, so let's say that, um, I don't know, are you married? I am. All right, so assuming it's a good day in, on your relationship and your wife calls you and she's lost. And it's a good day, so you wanna help her out. And so um, what might be the first question you ask her? Where are you at? There you go. <laughs> there you go. Now on a bad day, you may, you may say, I got a bad connection, honey, call me back. No, so you're gonna ask her, where is she? Because basically, understand when our buyers and sellers are coming to us from, a, and, they're, and they're in fear, Let's dig a little bit and find out what's, what's driving that fear because we can't really handle it until we isolate it. And we do that through questions. Now, something else I've learned uh, teaching and you know, um, Gary Keller and even Bold has, a, Diana used to ask a lot of questions. There are no bad questions, just good questions and better questions. I'll put an asterisk by that. Uh, I made a mistake early in my career when I asked a young lady when, she was, when the baby was due and she wasn't pregnant. So I'll put it, that is probably one question is a bad question. Short of that, let me, let me demonstrate this for you. Uh, Patrick, I don't know this answer to this question. What month were you born? October. October. Now, that is a good question because here's the deal. I learned something. I didn't know that. However, did Patrick learn anything? No, he already knew he was born in October. Now, how do you turn good questions into great questions? When you learn and they self-discover, when you make them think, when they process things, you know, basically when they have to start verbalizing their thoughts, many times they're going to catch themselves and say, well, that's not that big a deal or that doesn't sound right because it, because it just helps them to verbalize it. Now here, let me, let me change the question around Patrick. Uh, what do you like best about being born in October? Love Halloween. Well, um, he may have been asked that question before. However, doesn't it make them stop and think? That's uh -huh. what we want to do when we isolate. So here's a metaphor. And by the way, that right there, Kristen and I, if, if we could ever travel again in our whole lifetime, um, we would love to come to Denver and do a six or eight hour, uh, six or seven hour class on, on this formula right here, how to get into question-based relationships because your people will love you for it. So. That's the framework. I don't have time to go in, into it on this call. However, let's go ahead and use some examples. And one of the ones I came up with is the prescription, kind of timely. A lot of people are talking about drugs and uh, different uh, medicines, et cetera, et cetera. So here, here's the metaphor and here's the script. You might like it, might not. Here we go. I call it the, the prescription script. Miss buyer or seller, if, if your ph physician prescribed a new medication for you, would you want them to explain the possible side effects first? Now, Patrick, do you think most rational patients might want to? They might want to yeah. know. Absolutely. I know on TV, when they advertise, they got to give you the side effects. And, and believe me, and on, I get older, uh, I, my, I, my hair is not as thick as it used to be. So I'd be taking all kinds of pills if it wasn't for the side effects, right? So I read the labels. I don't want my feet to fall off. The side effects are important, or I should say potential side effects. And here's the thing that I, I want you guys to understand and, and internalize. Every decision your buyers and sellers make has a potential consequence. Watch. Here's a buyer objection. Now this could be a buyer that's just starting to look around. Maybe you've been showing them homes six or seven uh, weeks or days or months or years or knows and all of a sudden they're gonna back off. It could be a buyer that's already under contract and you know, doesn't wanna move forward. And understand, I'm, 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 I really appreciate Henry and what he was talking about. There's a lot, of, a lot of things happening in the mortgage industry I don't really understand. However, let's just take this objection. There's too much uncertainty. This is from a buyer. I just wanna put things on hold for the moment. Now they're coming from fear. Are, are, can, are you guys able to articulate to that buyer? And we're gonna do this in this formula guys right there, the side effects of that decision. So first of all, we wanna acknowledge it. Well, yeah, there is a lot of uncertainty in the marketplace. I, I kind of understand how, how you might think that. Now if we wanna isolate that, so Patrick, just role play with me, just assume that you gave me 
that uh, that uh, objection right there. Too much uncertainty. You know, you were you were ready to sign the contract, and now you're going to wait, right? Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this: This is isolation. So other than you feeling uncertain, is there anything else that's preventing you from moving forward today? I guess I'm just kind of scared of not knowing. Um, so, you know, is there anything outside of um, being uncertain? No, I mean, we were ready to buy. It's just now I don't know what to do. Well, what are you uncertain about? Well, I'm, I'm concerned that, um, that once I do, you know, we do buy that home and um, what happens if there's a, a, a job relocation or what happens if, that we have to put the house back on the market and the market's not the same one, Denny. What, what do we do? What if we're gonna lose money? Now, it's interesting, it, when, when the buyer says he's uncertain, many times we'll kind of gloss over that and not dig. I mean, there's a lot of things they could be uncertain about. I could be uncertain that I'm gonna lose my job. I'm gonna be uncertain that the stock market, I lost my equity, I don't know about my future. I'm uncertain because I think the market may crash. Or I might think it might, I might be a better buying opportunity later. Don't you think we're, it helps us to dig a little bit, to isolate and get them into like, so we understand, get to the center of the Tootsie Roll Pop? Yeah. And so, so I hear you're saying your uncertainty is kind of revolves around, you mentioned a couple of things there, uh, Patrick. You mentioned the fact that um, uh, about your, uh, well, you said your job situation, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I said, what happens if we have a job relocation? Okay, a relocation. All right, and then uh, and you also mentioned something about uh, the market. You know, something may happen in the marketplace, right? Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you, who do you work for? Uh, well, I, I work for uh, a medical industry, a medical hospital. I work for a hospital. Oh, man. All right. So now notice I am not telling him anything. What am I doing? I'm asking questions. I'm basically playing a chess match, and I'm getting my pieces on the board. So, all right, uh, now did you have any concerns about a relocation, uh, what, you know, like two, uh, six weeks ago when we were, you know, just started looking for homes? No, I, I haven't, but I've had a lot of, I mean, my, I know my boss and other hospitals are talking and we just, we don't know what's going on. Um, so we don't know if we're gonna have to move, if we're not, kind of what the volatility that's going on there. Okay. And let me ask you, um, if you had to put a percentage on that, that happening, 100% or 1%, what percent would you put on that? May, may, I mean, right now, I'd say 10%, but it could, that could grow. Now, I have to just kind of slow down here and help you guys understand. Make them do that, because in, in, when we hear that, and he says 10%, that doesn't sound like a very big objection to me. So um, let's just say he says 10%, and I'm, I'm just going to deal with this one. Well, let me ask you something. Obviously, you work for a hospital. I was thinking about this this morning. Of the most secure jobs there are in the, on the planet, you know what they might be right now? <laughs> Medical profession. <laughs> yes, I wish I was a nurse right now, or uh, you know, maybe I made masks or something. You're the only people that gets overtime, and everybody else is staying home playing Parcheesi. So... So there's probably, are you, are you actually, all right, so there's no, you don't feel there's a chance you losing your job, right? I don't think, not at this point. No, I mean, your job is more secure than, than, than anything. So let me ask you, um, you know, because you work around medicine, you know, medicine has side effects. Do you think a, a doctor, if a doctor gave you a prescription, you would want them to tell you the side effects of that decision? Gosh, I sure would hope so. <laughs> yeah. So do you, I, I would you, I, I trust you'd consider me your real estate professional. Do you mind if I give you some uh, uh, balance in that decision and the side effects of you, uh, of you waiting, how it might have a negative effect? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Please. I'd like to know. All right. So now here we go. Now here's the thing. You can take a list of, you can, I, what I did is I made a list of different things. We don't have to talk about all these from a time stake. However, what we're going to do and we're going to play it down the middle, you guys. Um, and we're going, to, we're going to help Patrick understand the side effects of his decision. Now, quickly, something I learned this past week as I was talking to a potential uh, registrant for Bold, Bold Pivot. 
the team leader called me, Patrick, and said, hey, look, I got a guy I want to help. He's been in real estate 15 years. He really is not really doing, he's barely hanging on after 15 years, seriously. Um, and he was afraid to invest $100 for Bold Pivot. So he wanted me to call him. Well, I did, and I had about a 20-minute conversation with him. And, and finally, at the end, because I took the pressure off, I said, you know what? Hey, I don't really care if you sign up. You just you got to feel like it's good for you. And that's kind of the takeaway close. And here's my aha V8 moment, I call it. When I got off the phone, I started thinking about it. Do we as agents care about our clients enough that we care that they make the right decision? I think, mm -hmm. it's, I think that's a yes. However, when we get to the point where we're not attached to the outcome of their decision, that's where the power and the freedom resides. Because there's no pushing anymore. We're going to show you this. We'll show you the benefits and maybe the, the, um, the downside of your decision and encourage you to make the right decision. And that if they ask us for our opinion, we'd vote on that. However, when we say, you know, Patrick, whatever you decide to do, whether you decide to move forward now or in six months, I'm going to be here for you. I just thought it would be my job to show you the potential side effects. So does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It does. They just, go, there's, they just all, they just take, they're all their defense, defenses go down because you don't, at that point in time, you no longer have an agenda other than to present the facts. The facts will be very compelling. So for example, this is worth remembering guys, because this is, this is absolutely right. When someone were to ask you, when is the best time to buy? The answer is not now. It's the best answer is the best time to buy is when sellers fear tomorrow is worse than today. Wow. So I'll stop because I, you know, is, there may be some things in the chat box or questions. Here's, so is, is there anything you want to comment on? Because I just don't want to preach and then take the offering. So I want you guys to talk some. Um, Denny, I think the, the, if we could take the next few minutes here and just shoot some scripts at you and see what your, you know, your objections are. And, um, I know that there's, there's some of us on the call who, who came with scripts or, you know, and this is awesome because these are the conversations we're having and, um, you know, that, that's our, our goal to get past these roadblocks. Um, so our for those, yeah, for wh whomever has a, 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 a question about a script or a script, um, jump on here, hit the unmute button. Uh, now's your opportunity. Or I'll just unmute all of you and make all of you talk. I love it. Even better. Go for it, Amber. Sold. Unmute all. You're all on. <laughs> Don't make me call on you. I will. I'm actually meeting um, with a person that I just connected with. He called in response to a rental that I had that's um, actually been rented out for three months, but he was just wanted it so bad just to make sure because it has garages and so forth. So I um, developed developing a relation with him just in the last few days, a property came on that is like perfect for him. And it's very unique and specific, but he's been very clear. I'm not buying until August. I'm not buying until August. So since I don't know this man, my husband who's working from home is going to go with me to meet him. And your quote, I wrote it down, when sellers fear tomorrow is worse, um, selling is worse than today. So um, I never want to pressure anybody. I don't really know this man, but um, we really connected just over this rental and he loved it and whatever. And I found one that's better than mine. Um, and he, he can buy. So um uh, we're so new into this coronavirus, but um, I really think it could be a missed opportunity for him if he waits till August. Okay, so then, Patrick, that question kind of goes on with the same with the thing we're talking about is like a buyer reluctance, right? So right. I'll go through these points really fast, and these will be your bullet points you can show him or tell him the side effects or ask him the side effects. Number one. We don't have time to go into his motivation and you have to dig into that. And I don't know why there may be something happening in August where he gets the money where he can't buy it till August. You can find that out. Sure. However, and here's how I would handle it. That being aside is that, you know, um, is it Amber? Me? No. No, it was Rhonda. I didn't hear that. I'm sorry. That was Rhonda. Rhonda. Hey Rhonda. Hey, listen, um, let me ask you, you're the buyer. 
I understand. Let's just set August aside for a moment. Uh, under, uh, are there any circumstances you would consider buying before uh, August? I, I wish I could put myself in his shoes, but I don't know him that well. But well, you can role play it any way you want. This okay. Um, well, I'm, I'm purchasing this property because I want my dad to have a place and then another part of my family. And we all three kind of want our own separate spaces. It could be a triplex, a duplex, single family home. Um, I'm kind of all over the board. I've got a. Okay, hang on. Hang, hang on. Okay. Hang on. For the second, sake of time, just uh, is there, would there be, is there it, would, under, would you buy before August under certain circumstances? Yes or no? Um, depending on my job uh, circumstance, I'm in uh, construction. He is in construction. And um, I travel a lot. So I, I'm actually new to the area. Okay. So do yeah, you mind if I share some of the reasons why a buyer should consider now versus later? I would love that. Yes. Number one, when you know when the best time to buy is? We just talked about it. I don't have to go over it again. When sellers fear tomorrow is worse than today. Do you, do you think there's some uncertainty in sellers' minds that there's a little fear in the market right now for sellers? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's interesting here, there should be a billboard put up on your interstate. This is the best time to buy in 10 years because for the last 10 years, the sellers have been winning the game because it's called a seller's market for that a reason. This is the first time in 10 years where the teeter-totter may be balanced, maybe even leaning your way. That's and so basically, if you could get a home for five or ten percent less today versus August, would you consider it? I might consider it, but in ten, it, it might fall. It could be at that period that it could fall even um, more. It it could it could, and again, I don't have a lot of time on the call here to deal with that, and so. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm putting some, these are the side effects. Right now might be your best time. We're not talking about the future yet. Number, <laughs> number two, is it possible that not only you can, might get the best, you might get the best price, you can get better terms. And maybe the seller may throw in more things because the seller's more motivated today to sell than, uh, because, than he was six weeks ago or maybe six months from now. Next, if you look on my list, your selection, do you think a lot of buyers are stepping out of the market right now? Because they're uncertain. Yeah. So when buyers step out, does that give you better choice? So that's a, that is a isn't that a reason why a buyer may want to still be looking now? Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of the concept called multiple offers? <laughs> yes, she has. She yes. has. <laughs> I had twelve offers over the weekend. And here's the thing. Now that are are multiple offers. A benefit for the seller or the buyer? Yes. How would you like to shop in a market and take advantage of the market where you're king instead of the seller? Would that make sense? Would that make you happy? Mm -hmm. and, and here's the other thing is that when you decide, and I'm just going to point number three, I'm going through this fast instead of having a big conversation. Number three, let's say we want to wait. And when certainty comes back into the market, and it may be by June and maybe by August, when you, when you feel better about the market and you feel comfortable moving forward, will you be the only one in the Metro Denver area that feels better? Mm -hmm. No. Who else will feel better? Everyone. <laughs> Other buyers, right? That's called competition. Other sellers, they're going to go out and basically now that they're going to be digging in. So here's the interesting thing. Isn't it worth at least considering staying in the market now while you might have some advantages and if the right home comes the wrong, the right opportunity, wouldn't it make sense to move forward instead of waiting until it basically you'll have to take a number and get in line to buy a house again? You see what I'm doing there? I mean, I'm giving you some of the side effects of a buyer waiting. And what's interesting, it's the same thing. It's the same thing for a seller. They have the same list of things there, basically for them. It's just I just changed one word. Sellers. And so when you, you can study these slides, and it's hard to get across in basically 20 or 30 minutes. However, do you understand the concept that if you can show them that there's a consequence in their in their decision? they may let logic enter back in and, and, and you can get them back into the thought of buying. And the bottom line is if he wants to wait to August, if you want to run, you want to wait to August and that's the best decision for your family, 
that's okay with me because I'll be here in August. Awesome. Awesome. So, um, Denny, we're right at 1201 right now. Um, do you have just a couple minutes to answer any questions um, that may be out there? Uh, and, and, and ladies and gentlemen, we'll go a couple minutes over. I just want to give you the opportunity to ask uh, questions while you have Denny on the line. Denny, right. the number one question in the chat box right now is, can we get a copy of the slides? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I figured you probably were doing a screenshot of something anyway, so. <laughs> I'll send it to Patrick. I'll send it to Patrick. Thank awesome. you, sir. Thank you. That's all you want to know? What are some other I, questions? I did have a question uh, around a $1.3 million listing. Um, we're ready to move forward, and now they're worried that sitting on the market longer is going to affect them. And, um, you know, I can go both ways on it, but I'd love to hear your feedback around that. I, I love that. We've had some of the same sellers. We've actually role played this a little bit. So, what's your name? Jody. Jody. Mm -hmm. All right, Jody. Yeah. So you're a seller. So let me ask you this. Um, so I'm going to go back to my formula. I understand. I understand what your thoughts are. Let me ask you. Other than, uh, so your your main so you're concerned. This is the wrong time to put the house on the market, right? Because it might it might take longer to sell, and the days on the market may work against you. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, we're pretty much at a uh, haven't lived there long and need to get out exactly what we put into it nine months ago. So, all right. So, um, other than that, is is there anything else that's concerned you? That's other than that. Write that down. It's not in a slide. You want to do other than that, other than that, other than that before you address. Um, uh, you want to unload your groceries before you unpack them. That's kind of what I'm doing. So, is there anything else that you're moving forward? No. Honestly, we need to, uh, we're getting a divorce, then we need to move forward. <laughs> well, congratulations. Uh, yeah. okay. So let me ask you, if a, me. <laughs> if a doctor were to give you some pills, a prescription, would you want the doctor to explain the potential side effects of those pills? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, so do you mind if I explain some of the potential side effects of you waiting? Sure, I'd love to hear it. All right, so here we go. Number one, were you around in 2006? I was. Do you, do you remember what happened when, in the different parts of the country were different. However, 2006 was kind of the housing correction. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. and, and in some places, the housing prices fell quite a bit. Let me ask you a question. When the, the market first started changing, for, right at the beginning, and the sellers were a little bit uneasy, yet they thought, you know what, I'm going to get out now instead of waiting. Who won that battle? The sellers that got out when the market was here or the sellers that got out when the market was there? The ones that got out at the beginning. Yeah. So now you have the choice. You're the seller. So, so number one is that if the market's going to correct, it's going to get worse before it gets better, correct? Yeah. So is maximizing your equity important? Yeah, today more than the future, for sure. And then, okay, so th that's, that's one reason why moving forward now is going to be uh, to our advantage. Secondly, let me ask you this. As you're feeling that concern and wanting to pull your house off the market, do you think other sellers are having that same concern? Yeah, I'm sure. And so as they pull their house off the market and you are on the market, does that become your advantage? Yeah, less competition. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Here's the other thing. Do you think buyers are having that fear as well? Yeah, probably. However, there are people that still need a house because they sold their home in Akron and they need to move into a house in Denver and they're not, they're not going to basically in, in, you know, live under a bridge. So here's the nice thing. Right now, the buyers that would be looking and wanting to see your house are gonna be the most serious buyers we've had in a long time because looky lose our home playing Candy Crush. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's true, that's true. And have you read about interest rates lately? Yes, yes, that's definitely helping our situation. So when you put this on kind of a Ben Franklin, you look at the positive side effects of, you know, of putting it on now versus the negative ones, which one makes the most sense for you? move forward now 
before things change? No, I mean, we took about four minutes. And, yeah. and we, we could la layer and go deeper. However, those are actually solid facts that you can back up. And you, you, don't have to, you don't have to tell them anything. You just ask them and they will self-discover. Yeah, yeah. I like that, thank you. And I like the cat too. Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> say, <laughs> I turned yeah. into a cat. <laughs> Awesome. Does, thank you, Jody. Does anyone else have yeah. another question? Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, two things. Um, Denny, I'd love to be able to set something up with you here after the call, and we'll get, we'll get you back out here. We'd love to have you and Kristen here in Denver again. Uh, miss you guys. And we just really appreciate you taking the time and the extra time um, that you did today. Um, be, being a rock star bold coach and being our bold coach, and I, I don't think there's ever a former bold coach. I think once you're the coach, you're the coach, right? Um, tell us a little bit about Pivot. What, what's important about that? And, and just really quickly. Thank you. Thank you. Are you guys having it there? Mm -hmm. uh, we have a more, Southwest yes. Market Center is going to be doing it in June or May. Well, and we do have Pivot coming. We're in... Um, Cody Gibson's launch in Torrance, California. Awesome. Oh, okay, yeah. So here's the deal. I mean, uh, I haven't seen the curriculum yet. It's going to be via Zoom. All of us, um, although my studio is not set up yet, it's, I have a professional camera. It's not going to be like you're going to have to listen to a guy or a gal talking to a cell phone for like a couple hours. It's going to be set up three days a week, starting the first week of May, most likely uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. What I, it, and it's going to, it, that's, proposed that final two or three hours a day so we'll have basically we'll be sharing a lot of stuff from Gary that has to do with the, the pivot of the market so it's not going to be we're not basically cramming the same seven steps of bold point two point zero into this one this one's going to be specifically writ written for the shifting market and scripts you can use with your database and um, things we need to learn about mindset so for and for a hundred dollars I mean you blow more than that on um, on Starbucks in a month. So for the time invested, uh, I think it's a no-brainer. And what's going to happen is each class can only have 140. We had 90 people raise their hand that went in bold, and then, then of course bold 2.0 didn't happen, and so they now have another 50 market centers that want to join. So if you're thinking about it and you've got one local do it before it hits the max because they, these will sell out at $100, $100 a pop with the max of 140 or 150 people in it. And if you have, if Cody's doing yours, that's awesome. You've got probably the best, the best presenter there is since um, sliced bread. So that, that's a real good opportunity for you. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Denny. Well, and, and as we go, if, do you have, Den, Denny, do you have five more minutes or two more minutes? Um, so I want to do something kind of fun, guys. Denny and I were talking about this, and um, he has offered, which is incredible, and thank you, thank you. Um, Denny has offered to do a 30-minute coaching session um, that we'd like to use as an auction towards a charity, whether that is uh, KW, uh, KW Cares, um, or maybe it goes to Kristen Henry's son, um, who has... Um, broke his neck in that, that accident that happened. Um, or maybe it goes towards the Chris Walden uh, House of Hope. And um, so what I'd like to do is start out the bidding for this at $25. So $25, oh my gosh, I'd buy like 100 of these right now. So, um, and who's, who's willing to start at $25 and take yourself off mute and let's bid this bad boy up. So I'll start $25. Yeah, man, that puts me at 50 bucks an hour. Yeah, well, I was looking at this. I was like, holy cow, that's $375 typically, right, for MAPS coaching. So 30 minutes. I get, I get, uh, I get 2500 a month for coaching for a 30-minute for a th call once a week. Wow. So, All right. So we just so shaved some zeros off there. So $25 in the, and throw in a roll of toilet paper or something, okay? <laughs> All, All right, of it you guys, to you gotta 50. Be, take yourself off a of mute and let's start bidding. So starting at 25, I thought I saw William's hand go up. Yep, William, 25, 25, 25. 
Who's I'll got go 50? 50. Awesome, 50. Jody. So Jody's at 50. Fantastic. Do I have a 75? William. Is that yep, William? Just at 75. Yep. Woo, 75. Do I have 100? Do I have 100? 100. Jody oh. just took 100. Woo, Jody. <laughs> All right, do we have 125? I'll do 125. Woo, Ron does. <laughs> Ron is at 125. Do we have 150? I'll do 150. Jody's at 150. <laughs> awesome. Jody's got the cat. I know. <laughs> In my car. <laughs> uh, all right, so do we have 175? 175. All right, 150 going once. 150 going twice. How many should you do? I'll do 175. <laughs> 175. Rhonda Richardson. Do I have a 200? 175 going once. 175 going twice. 200. <laughs> okay, so here's the deal, Patrick. Yes. So what I'll do, if uh, I'll sell up, up to, we'll do, I'll do three. If there's three people that give 200 uh, for, and generally speaking, we'll have more than a half hour. Uh, I'll do three of them uh, for 200. If you got three people that want 200, then you can just stop the bidding right there. That's $600 to a good cause. All right. So we got Rhonda and Jody on that. Who will take the third? Come on, William. 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 <laughs> One more, one more. William took the third. That, that's Did he? Awesome. That's the three. That's the three. You guys are rock stars. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> Denny, you're incredible. Thank you, my friend. I greatly appreciate it. I'll follow up with you afterward. Um, hey, guess what? At 12.30 today, guess what we're going to be going over? Shift, <laughs> and it's tactic number four, which is all about motivation. So that's in just a few minutes here. We'll get started. Um, jump on there as well. And uh, Henry, thank you for joining us today. Denny, thank you, thank you, thank you. With that, guys, incredible meeting. I will see everyone at the Shift Club. And then, um, Deb, we have some Ignites going on, right? So yep. we'll have those going. Don't, don't miss out on these. These are awesome. Uh, and uh, we'll see you here soon. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Bye. Be safe. Yep. Stay thank healthy. You, Denny. Thanks, Henry. Thanks, Henry. Thanks, Thanks Denny. Henry. Bye.